Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Veg Networking Canada, where vegan plant-based companies connect and collaborate. We honor, acknowledge, and respect that we are located on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of many Indigenous peoples of Canada. Today, we have a special guest with us, a world traveler and global food connoisseur, passionate public speaker, especially when teaching in cooking class settings, and a soon-to-be two-time cookbook author. Veg Networking Canada is pleased to introduce the founder of Roni's Kitchen. Welcome, Roni Zaide. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for joining us. And for everybody listening with us live and people who are going to be listening to this on their own with the replay, can you share more on a personal level of what led you to go vegan? Yes, I love this one of my favorite stories to tell. Um, so I actually my journey started as a vegetarian when I was 11 years old. Um, it was my birthday, my 11th birthday. My family went out for dinner and it was a seafood restaurant, which is not something my family did very often or ever before. And my cousin ordered a crab. And it was the first time that I saw the full thing on a plate. And I made the connection. And even though I knew before when I was eating animal products as a kid, what they were from, it never really connected. And just at that moment, I said, I'm not going to eat animals anymore. And um, yeah. And then I went on to be a vegetarian for about 20 years. And my family thought it was a joke, but obviously jokes on them. Um, <laughs> and then over the years, it, it's interesting to think about it now because I used to think that being vegan is so extreme just because of how, you know, I grew up. And but I think that point of view also really helps me when I talk to people that are not vegan or vegetarian, because most of us were not born that way. Um, and anyway, yeah, I started my business. Uh, it's turning 10 this year and I started in 2014. The first couple of years, it was vegetarian. And I kind of went back and forth between being vegan and vegetarian for a few years. And then about eight years ago, one day, just again, that like switch that just is like, okay, this is, you know, enough and never turn back and love it. Also, you know, my, my business turned vegan too. Um, it, it was pretty much almost vegan, but um, yeah. And it's been great. Cool. Yeah. It's interesting to hear everybody's different stories of, of how it came. And, you know, it's interesting how it seems like a switch automatic, but obviously there's a lot of information and learning and things that lead up to that, to that switch. So um, very cool. Now is Roni's kitchen, your entrepreneurial start, your origin story, if you would, or was there something that kind of came before? Um, well, I worked in the restaurant industry before I started my own business. I always thought I would end up having my own business um, because of all the advantages that it has, being your own boss, the flexibility, the freedom, um, not good with authority. So it was always kind of in the back of my mind. And yeah, after working in in restaurants, um, I used to think that I wanted to have my own restaurant. And I worked at uh, the Coup in Calgary. It's uh, one of the first um, vegetarian restaurants that's been here for a long time. There, I think they just turned 20. Uh, and I worked there for about eight years. And I wanted to open a brunch place. And I was kind of working in, you know, a business plan and the financial aspect. And uh, one of my good friends is an accountant and he was like helping me crunch the numbers. And when I figure out, okay, this is going to be a very expensive. It's a, it, I mean, back 10 years ago, I think it was about $150,000 just to start, which I did not have. And he also used to back then own a restaurant in Calgary that only did a lunch and dinner service. And he said, why don't you do a pop-up at our place on the weekend? 
try it out, test it out. So for a year and a half, that's how my business started. I did a brunch pop-up every weekend at his restaurant. And I learned that I don't want to have my own restaurant. And it was a great way of learning that um, without <laughs> investing all that money. Um, but it was it was great because, well, it was really fun. Um, and I learned so much. But also it was a really great way for people to get to know me and my business in a very non-committed way. You just come in for a meal. And then I advertised my classes and the catering um, and people started coming to cooking classes and booking a wedding or booking an event. And it was kind of a, a, yeah, just a really great way for people to get to know me before, you know, committing to, oh, okay, I'm going to pay you to cater my 200 people wedding. So it had its purpose and its um, role and it was great. And actually this June, um, after not wanting to do pop-ups for many years, we're going to do a one-day special pop-up to celebrate the 10th anniversary. So I'm very excited about that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for walking us up to speed of kind of how you started and I guess where you're at now. And uh, the next question for you is where is your brand, where is your company going in the future? Well, to answer that, maybe I can go back a little bit because one thing I really like about my business, you know, when I first started it, um, my aunt told me the story about this man that she knows. And basically the, the gist of the story was like, make your business work for you, not the other way around. Like you got to make it work. And, you know, when you first start, it doesn't seem possible because I definitely did my share of working every day, all day for <laughs> many, many months. <clears throat> but then with time, I was like, okay, like this needs to work for me. And the business has shifted. You know, I did a, I used to do a meal prep service. Um, I was, I was doing in-person classes. I, I did a line of grab and go meals for coffee shops. And I had, would have these ideas. I would test them out and the things that didn't work or I didn't enjoy, I would let them go rather than you say, Oh, I said I would do it. So I'm going to do it no matter what, even if it makes no sense, if I'm not making money if you know, cause sometimes we kind of get stuck on something um so looking into the future it's also like okay like what do I want to do that I enjoy um and of course that also goes hands in hand and then with my personal life and where do I want to go I'm in Calgary currently and I'm not sure we're going to stay here in the long term me and my family so that also you know I've been here for a long time my business has a reputation here starting somewhere new is scary but um one of the things i started doing a few years ago and i would really like to focus more on that is retreats uh, vegan retreats and i do also like to travel so the idea is always to try to combine that um so that's that's definitely a big focus and and more cookbooks. I'm working on my second book right now. Um, it's only going to be 40 recipes this time. The first book was 100 recipes. And I already have probably two more books worth of recipes ready. Um, good problems to have. So, yeah. Retreats, books, um, experiences. I like creating experiences for people whether if it's a day retreat or an event they're coming for to eat or a week long retreat. Um, yeah. That's amazing. 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 We'll talk more about the titles of your first book and your second book that's coming. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about those <laughs> among some other things a little bit later on, but for now, um, what are some transformations or trends that you've spotted or are spotting in your industry? Well, Calgary is interesting because, you know, it's called Cowtown. And when I first came here in 2006, um, there was one vegetarian restaurant. It was the Coup. And I ended up working there for eight years. And now, and, and vegan was not unheard of, but very hard to find. And now Calgary is amazing. There's we have a vegan bakery, a vegan pizza place, a vegan taco place. So many ama and amazing stuff. Like not just you know sometimes 
I feel like there's something vegan in you and people are so excited that it's vegan, even if it's not that good, but these places are legit, like really good. Um, and it's so great. You know, we go with my family here. They're not all vegan and it's one of their favorite places just because it's, it's good food. So it's great to see that Calgary has so much more like vegan businesses, but also in restaurants have more plant-based menus. People are just, it's not such a scary word anymore to a lot of people, to some maybe still. Um, I cater vegan weddings also in, you know, and, and usually the couple would be vegan, but their crowd isn't. <clears throat> and it's one of my favorite things when people show up and they come up to us in the kitchen and say, I didn't know I can enjoy a vegan meal. That's so great. Like, you know, people are more open to it, it seems. Um, yeah, so that's really beautiful to see. There's definitely a lot of, um, you know, I mean, they're called alternatives, but I just read a beautiful article about how this is, they're not alternatives, they're real foods. They're food made out of plants. Um, but there's a lot more, yeah, for people that do the transition and miss a specific flavor or something, there are more options. And it just seems like it's easier and more accessible. And I love seeing that. Yeah. Yeah, just on that last point, um, the 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 term alternative protein, um, protein actually comes from plants. So if anything, the alternative protein is, yeah. you know. Um, are there any trends or transformations <laughs> specific to the uh, cookbook world or anything like that that you've that you've come across? Because you're you're writing your second book now. Is there is a cookbook a cookbook a cookbook? If it's vegan, then that's I guess a, a trend or a transformation. Is there anything else in that area? Um, you know, it's funny because before my first book came out, people often ask me, do you have a cookbook? Do you have a cookbook? And I used to think like, seriously, do people buy cookbooks with the internet now? Like, is there a need for it? But when people kept asking, I realized, okay. And and now I understand that when someone trusts someone, because you go off the internet, there's so many recipes. I've experienced it myself. You get the ingredients, you spend all the time and it doesn't always work out. So when it's someone you trust and you, you know, use the recipes again, um, I guess people buy, buy the books. Um, there is a, a local author here, Julie Van Rosendell. Um, and she's been kind of a non-official mentor for me. <laughs> um, she, she's not vegan, but she's super vegan friendly, like in her books and her recipes. Um, and she's, yeah, she's shared with me so much. She has more than 12 cookbooks. And so this this book that I'm working on now, it's going to be a lot smaller, like I mentioned, um, because shipping and printing, everything is becoming more expensive. And I think that's maybe a trend that the books are getting smaller. So you can, you can create more books more often, um, but smaller ones. You know, my first book, I should have brought one to show you guys, but it's uh it's a it's a big book. Um I sell the book for $35. And last week someone ordered a book from Newfoundland and it cost $35 to ship it to Newfoundland. <laughs> so yeah. Um, but you know, I mean, I see there's lots of amazing vegan cookbooks out there. And I know a lot of the people that buy my book are vegan but I also know a lot of them are not people are just enjoying the recipes enjoying adding more plant-based options to their diet more vegetables um and it's just yeah it's it's great knowing that you know I have I received so many photos of people's kitchens just sh taking a photo of like the book you know on their counter they're like it's here because we use it so, so often um yeah, I don't know if that answers your question, but... Oh, it totally does. And it makes me think too, personally, for my own experience, cookbooks are cool, especially if you have kids, because it's tangible, you can bring it out and kind of go through it. It's not the same as following a recipe on your phone or your tablet. It's just totally not the same when you have kids. And then also to your point about uh, getting smaller and more focused, I guess, um, 
that I never really thought about that. I don't use cookbooks that often because I just find there's so much and it's kind of hard to to pick one. So anyway, uh, just kind of uh, that makes sense. That's cool. Um, so yes, it, it totally answers the, the follow up. Um, this question in particular, uh, no right or wrong answers. People have answered it from um, things that they're currently doing, things that they've done in the past, things that they're looking to do in the future. They've answered it from a personal lens of what they've done and or through their business. But the question is centered around giving back and charity. Um, what does that mean to you when you hear that? I get lots, I'm sure a lot of you guys do, uh, requests for donations, for events, for silent auctions. Probably every week I get at least one request, um, you know, being a local business. And I definitely focus on um, vegan organizations. Um, there's a sanctuary nearby. It's called the Alice Sanctuary. Um, I love them. They're really, they do amazing work. And I've collaborated with them. Actually, we're doing a Mother's Day brunch together um, again. So, yeah, I definitely try to focus my, you know, giving portion to, yeah, organizations that are vegan or about animals. Although it, it, it's, it's funny, sometimes I get a request for, you know, protect the wildlife and they're celebrating with a barbecue. And I'm like, this does not like do you see what's happening here <laughs> um it just doesn't make sense but i just respectfully decline when it doesn't um it doesn't work but i i have an, this idea that maybe one day will come to life of doing some sort of a karma kitchen where people can come together and cook together um just to spend time together as a community cooking together um it will be vegan hopefully with like saved foods um there's a conversation that started with someone locally in calgary but we'll see when it would actually happen yeah no that that's amazing um i'm trying to think of your question if there was if there was anything i missed <laughs> Yeah, take your time. Anything that comes up, organizations in terms of charity or giving back that means something to you or no pressure, but yeah, no. Yeah, it's there's really a lot of great um, local organizations here and a great community of vegan businesses in Calgary. Um, and it's great to see when we come together. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, the next question is the one that I was talking about where now you can uh, hopefully tell us a little bit more about the title of your first book, maybe what it's a little bit about, your second book that's coming out, when it's coming out, the title of that book. <laughs> but the question is, and you also talked about uh, Julie Vander Rosendale, if Julie Van Rosendale. Julie Van Rosendale, yeah. <laughs> um, and her books. But the question is, what are some books, podcasts, apps or other resources you'd recommend to business owners and entrepreneurs? And we do kind of frame the question around what has helped you as an entrepreneur or business owner around scheduling, mindset, leadership, other things. But of course, since you have cookbooks, we'd love to hear more about those too. As for resources, to be honest, um, people, community. From the beginning, uh, when I started the business, so first it was, you know, people, my friends and my family, but then other businesses, vegan businesses, like, just like getting together with other people, sharing the knowledge, the experience, the things that the mistakes that you made and how, you know, how maybe someone else can uh, avoid them. <laughs> um, that has been my biggest resource. And and also like you know i've had new businesses approach me and say hey can we ask you some questions um and i love sharing that um my friend once told me that knowledge is to be shared and and it's so true you know and we we gain so much from that connection there's a couple um groups in calgary too uh there's a great organization called be local that i used to attend their meetings um before i became a mom but um yeah, just 
you know, we would get together and by the end of a meeting be like, oh, let's do a collaboration. And me and another business would do a, a pop-up or an event or something. That's, to be honest, my, I feel like that's the resource I always go to. And, you know, with time I've, I've yeah, like there's an accounting um, program online that I would have never known about unless someone would have recommended and show me the robes. And uh, it's what I use for bookkeeping. And it's been great um after seeing some of my friends with bags of receipts <laughs> that they've collected over the years <laughs> and don't know what to do with them um yeah I feel like I have an ongoing list of books and podcasts that I want to get to but I don't really do unfortunately um some of them sometimes but nothing specific that I could say oh this oh there was one book that I read a few years ago that was uh the definitely the e-myth if you guys have heard of it yeah um it was interesting just for perspective um you know I feel like everything you you take what you want and need from it and leave the rest um I I'm not one to follow strictly anything and uh, I can tell you about my books now, unless you had any other questions about um, some resources. Okay, so my first book is called Ronnie's Kitchen, um, Recipes from My Food Journeys Around the World. It's funny because now that I'm working on my second book, I'm like, why did I call it Ronnie's Kitchen? Because now all the books are, you know, but anyway, I didn't, I, I, I was hoping I would have more books, but it just made sense that it would be called that way. Um, I always thought I was going to write a book. I didn't think it was going to be a cookbook. I love to travel. I take photos and it kind of became the perfect combination. So the book has a hundred recipes. Um, each recipe is a photo it was really important to me because I feel like when you open a book and there's a recipe with no photo, you're probably not going to make it. Um, the photographer, Hannah Byrne, she's amazing. We met by luck. Um, and we're working on this next book together as well. And it's divided into three chapters. Chapter one is home. It's recipes from uh, my family, my upbringing. Sec um, second chapter is travel. So it's recipes for my travels. And chapter three, I dedicated to Calgary. It's recipes that I developed in my time here. And it was amazing and crazy to work on that book. It was a crowdfunding campaign. So people could pre-order the book before it came out. And what I did not know when I launched this campaign um, is that I had to send the material to the printer. It's almost two months before I wanted it ready. And I wanted to, you know, people are investing. I, I fundraised uh, more than $20,000. And you don't want to keep people waiting for too long. So my goal was to have the book ready within six months, which actually meant four months because we need to send to the printer two months before which actually meant three months because the campaign was a month so it was yeah it was wild um and the team that was working with the with me on the book um it was all of our first time they all wanted to always work on a cookbook so it there was a lot of back and forth that now we know better um many 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 late nights crazy hours um also was in the summer which is usually my business you know busy time of like weddings and I was teaching classes and I did not sleep very much that summer um but I'm really happy with how it turned out and the book that I'm working on now I have so much more experience and knowledge that I gave myself a year so it feels really nice and not stressful um and the whole team they they all said individually oh I know so much more you know the graphic designer the editor and the photographer I have more tools I have more experience so it's definitely a smoother ride this time which is really nice um and this book is called food therapy and it's um about to come out in November just before Christmas and yeah, this uh, this year, my family went through a very traumatic experience that 
kind of I didn't want to eat or cook for a couple of months after which was very weird for me because food is such a big part of my life and after a while I started preparing you know it just became fuel which is not my regular and after a while I started uh, preparing food again for friends and for family and people would come over and then I realized that this was a part of my healing journey and I was already working on a different book and decided to put that one on hold and start working on this one and it's recipes that are comforting not necessarily you know I think when people think comfort food they have a very it's like comforting more for like your soul <laughs> so it's been really great working um on this book i'm very excited about it yeah wow that's awesome i love that title food therapy and it's got got you know quite a story behind it um i don't know i'll find out later in november if you go more into that story <laughs> or not but um and mm -hmm. You're you're with the right people in terms of Edge Networking Canada. You you talked about resources being people and like minded folks and all of that good stuff. So we're happy to to have you here and and uh, meet you and uh, learn more about you. So you've mentioned Hannah, the photographer. You've mentioned Julie. You've mentioned the Alice Sanctuary. Um, mm -hmm. There might be more individuals or organizations, maybe even like some of our other speakers have talked about nature, um, but the question is centered around inspiration. So when you hear that, what does that mean and what comes up for you and your business? I mean, you said nature and it's definitely, it. that feels, yes. <laughs> um, I love so, you know, I love to grow food. I love to harvest food and then I like to cook it. Um, I spend, yeah, a lot of time outside, a lot of time in nature. I currently don't have my own garden, but hopefully soon I will again. Um, but yeah, I I love, you know, even just like, like food inspiration would come from just walking in the market or in the garden. And it's like, I always think about it as like someone that does a painting. I'm, you know, I always wish I, I could draw or paint. And I think we, it's the same thing. You start with like an idea and then it kind of, you're like, put, and I already know in my mind how, what I'm going to make is going to taste. And it's not always exactly that, but it's like, that's my art. Um, In terms of people, my boss is at the coup, the restaurant I worked at for many years. They were two women um they have since sold it but after working in kitchens that were mostly run by men working in a restaurant that was run by two amazing women I just saw okay you can run a business differently especially a food business they made us all feel so cared for and seen and like you know when people say we were like a family but it, it was true and and the best testimony was that we would finish our shift, go home and come back for dinner <laughs> almost every day some, sometimes or just sit and have drinks or hang out with each other. We would have potlucks. We would have adventure days that, you know, the restaurant was always closed on Mondays and they would they would take us on these like crazy trips and throw us like fun parties. And and when, you know, we were there, it was I remember there was a guy that came and worked with us for not very long and you know something was messed up in the kitchen he got all upset he started throwing things and swearing which is very normal in kitchen culture in a lot of places but it wasn't there and uh I just like very quietly I, I said hey can we just talk for a second and I said we don't really interact like this this way if you want to talk about something if you need to hug it out I think we were a bit too hippy dippy for him. So he didn't stay much longer, but, you know, we knew they had our backs. Uh, we used to get health benefits like in a restaurant. I think that's not very common. Um, and to me, just when I started my business, I was like, okay, like you can just be you. You can create your business about how you want to run your life. There's no one way of doing it. Um, and yeah, I'm very grateful for them to just being themselves and, and seeing that. Yeah. 
yeah, through the conversation too, and you kind of alluded it to a little bit there, it sounds like uh, what really inspires you or keeps you going is that, uh, I don't know how to phrase it, it's that like completion, like start to finish. Um, you know, like you have an idea for a book, you go through the journey, through the process and you complete, I guess everybody's, but for you in particular, I don't know, it just sounds like through the conversation that like you said, uh, planting food, growing food, harvesting, cooking the food, like that full circle, mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like anyways, um, do you, last question for you, Roni, do you have any disclaimer some people don't like framing it as advice but we'll use that word do you have any <laughs> advice lessons tips to share with business owners or entrepreneurs um I always tell people just like really trust trust your gut you know you know like I feel like people like I jumped into this I didn't go to business school I didn't um this was my, this is my business school. This is how I learned everything about it. Um, and of course, you know, business school is great for certain jobs for certain things, but I feel like people sometimes think, oh, I don't, I don't know enough. I don't have all of the things. Like if you're always going to wait to have the perfect conditions to start something, you may never start it. <laughs> um, so just follow your gut. If you're really passionate about something and you feel like you're good at doing it, do it um reach out to your community and if you don't have a community create a community you know like go meet other people like you guys here like um people that do similar things to you i think people are sometimes surprised of how other people are willing to share because they also went through that same process you know nobody was nobody started as a a business owner and no like we all had a day one at all of our jobs where we knew nothing and you you learn with time you grow with time you're going to make mistakes maybe some of them you can you know prevent if you <laughs> talk to some people before but you're you're going to make them and i think that fear of like or like failing or or not or like disappointing it, it really stops a lot of people and yeah, my advice is just follow your gut and believe in yourself. Maybe that sounds a little corny, but it's true. <laughs> follow your gut and take care of your gut with delicious plant foods. Um, and two, like you said, yes. <laughs> and like you said, lean on people because the advice, I guess, or lessons or wisdom or tips that you give is like, which we've heard from a lot of people um, is people are way more willing to help than you think. So know that, take that as advice, I guess. And yeah, make that reach out that connection, ask that thing that, you know, you, you. Um, all right. So we're going to leave the floor open for a little bit. If there's anything that in this conversation that you want to, you know, circle back to and go a little bit deeper on anything that maybe we missed or any announcements. And we had a, a question come in from someone who's with us right now. Uh, and that question is to that end. And it says, do you have your anniversary pop-up details, date, time, place that you'd like to share? Yes. Uh, so it's going to be June 1st. It's going to start at 10 a.m. and it's going to be a reservation only event. Like you'd have to book your spot ahead of time. Um, the tickets are actually going on sale tomorrow, Friday. So I'm very excited about that. And it's going to be at the attic in Inglewood, which is a local vegan and wine bar. Um, beautiful space, lovely people. Um, yeah, so all the information will be on my website, which is roniskitchen.com. And that would be, um, yeah, starting tomorrow, Friday, April 19th. I don't know when this video will be uh, posted, but soon after, um, I can share some more. Yeah, some of my other offerings. So I, my book, you can find it um, on my website or locally in Calgary in a bunch of stores under, yeah, again, on my website. And there's also an e-version and um, e-book for people that prefer that. Um, 
And I used to teach in-person cooking classes for many years. Maybe one day I will do that again. But during COVID, I transitioned to online. At first it was live. And then when I was preparing to go on maternity leave as a business owner, you got to take care of yourself in that sense. Um, I recorded all of my classes and um, they were on my website. Well, they're not, yeah, I mean, you can still access them through my website, but I just finished this huge transferring mission to Udemy. It's a platform for learning um, last week. Yeah, it was about a hundred computer hours of transferring. Um, there's nine classes. Each class has about nine videos, recipes, um, all the things. There's an Indian class, Thai fermentation, vegan cheese, dessert, lots of things. Um, just needed a more reliable platform than the one we were using. So yeah, my cooking classes, all the information of all my offering is on um, my website. It's the easiest way to find out. And then, yeah, if you follow me on social media, I often share, you know, recipes in like quick videos or photos that are like, sometimes I just make something that's super quick and it's just an easy way to share it. It's accessible for people. Um, so that's, that's fun. And I'm not sure when my next retreat will be yet, um, but it's in the works. There's always something in the works. My last retreat was in September and um, a little quick funny story about that because it just came to mind. So it was a collaboration, which I also really love doing with a friend that's a Wim Hof instructor. So it's a lot of uh, like, you know, breathing and cold and we, put, you know, we called it a Wim Hof and cooking, mindful cooking retreat. And quite a few people showed up because they saw I posted it and they were like a vegan retreat, yay. And they had no idea what Wim Hof was. <laughs> and when we send the email a week before saying like, okay, you know, don't forget your cold showers. And, and they're like, what's going on? What am I, what did I get myself into? <laughs> but everyone ended up having a great, a great time and yeah, learning new things about themselves. So yeah, I definitely do um, great collaborations. Hopefully the next one will be in Hawaii. Um, but it's still, it's still in the works. So, yeah. Mahalo, I guess. Is <laughs> um, okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was, that was so great. And everybody, uh, you can find out more online, roniskitchen.com, R-O-N-I-S kitchen.com. And it's the same handle on Instagram at Roni's kitchen. So you can find out all about that drool away order cookbooks all that fun <laughs> stuff uh roni thank you for joining us uh everybody else thank you for joining us this has been another episode of veg networking canada with the founder of roni's kitchen roni zide uh again thank you for being here everybody listening and with us live or listening otherwise thank you for being here and sharing some time with us as well we'll catch you soon on another episode take care bye for now <laughs>